So I was wondering what I was going to do for a project today, and uh, Brian helped me out. That used to be the thumb on the back of the tractor. The pin broke, and I got a little cattywampus in the middle. Apologize for the wind. And that mounted there and there. So it was good for like picking logs up and stacking them where you wanted to kind of move them. But somebody got a little overzealous. I got easily excited. <laughs> it was uh, digging stumps out of the ground with it and uh, she went kapooey. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to uh, do some welding. I feel like doing welding. So uh, he just so helped me out with that. So let's get this thing back to my house and see if we can fix it up. Cold start. that. Give her some of that. Well, you may have to uh, visualize this a little bit because it's all, it's all tore up. But essentially the way it was set up before was that pin went in through there and it was a fixed thumb. But you had three different positions you can kind of put it in. Each one allowed it to be, you know, compared to the bucket, a different, you know, ratcheted location. And you can still use the, the bucket part of it to go pick stuff up and move it away where some a lot of times you'll have a thumb that's got a hydraulic cylinder behind it this will be a hydraulic cylinder and it moves independently well i'm not going to get into all that and you want to get into all that then putting another cylinder on another circuit on maybe someday that can uh, happen but for now i just like the fact that uh, you're able to pick stuff up with it and move it around so i'm going to try building it back into that operation this was just too weak to begin with the cross member so i think what happened was that because that has a lot of power so if you're pushing against it and you're getting overzealous it's going to bend these two arms when these two arms bent now all the stress was on where that pin was so that's why that failed and i knew it i just told them you know, be gentle with it it is what it is i think this is uh gym equipment i used that from so I'm going to go think about this for a little bit. You guys can go and do the same. I think I may try to change it up a little bit if I can't find stuff to fix that with. And uh, maybe we'll go with a single blade in the center and get rid of that double uh, feed setup. And one other thing that was set up on it before was you were able to take this rod out. You pulled this pin out, that pin out, and then this was able to flip right up and you would put the pin back in in that location and the jaw would just stay right here on the side of the machine when you didn't use it so uh, that's the next thing to also keep in consideration is uh, can we have a position where it's tucked away where it's not being in use all right so i decided to try and reuse what i had i think the geometry of everything i had was decent i just think that the bridge between these two needs to be much stronger than what I had in there, which looks like it was probably a one and a half, one and a half by one and a half tubing, and then it looks like I plated it with something. Because the rest of it seemed like it didn't take any any damage to it, other than you know that getting tweaked. So I measured these guys out and got a dimension from there. 
this bushing looks like it's the bushing from here. Um, I may take the bushings right out completely and maybe try to go with a thicker diameter. All depends on what I can go find for that. And plus they're going to be a hard time trying to get those guys out of there. Anyway, I have a feeling that those bushings may be got tweaked and got ovaled. So again, it's, it's not like this is going to pivot. This pretty much just stays fixed in one position. We do have grease veins in there. So as long as you keep it pumped with grease, it may be all right. I'm walking around my hoard and let me see for some kind of tubing. That's going to be a little larger than the one that's on it. This looks like it's probably from a weight bench, probably a weightlifting bar. Maybe we can use that. I'm going to look a little bit more, see if I have anything a little bit more stout. If not, we'll dig that out. Get that pin out of there. It's going to fight me a little. I can't get a rotation on it enough to probably just cut that right off. And we're going to slice it. We'll just slice this mess off right here and this mess off right here. And uh, see if we can get the two arms and the pin kind of squared away on the tractor and then we'll start rebuilding from there. Get that guy to move a little for us. Got the plasma cutter fired up and I think we're going to be kind of maxing it out but let's go see if we can go sever this thing in half and uh, make for new. Step over here, get a better look. See it? Shake, shake. Ah! The hose is on you guys. That's why you're shaking. Well, next is I want to drive those pins out of there, but they're pretty peened over on the side. So I want to take a minute, take a flapper disc to them and see if we can bring it down to a taper.
I sure don't figure that side's gonna want to come out very easy. It looks like that really spread open on us. Let's go grab a big old hammer and beat on that and see if we can get her to uh, evacuate. Think it'll go? Even if it takes the bushing, that's fine. Let's see if it'll move though. That wasn't so bad. Yeah. Hope the second one's that easy. Hope we're gonna use a luck up on the first one. That one looks like it could uh, could be an issue. Yeah. I wonder if I could drive it. Let's try driving it this way. See if we can clean up the tip of it and drive it back. Pushing down. Do the same thing. That's the bushing that's supposed to be in the other piece anyway. Didn't go and dry. Let's uh, let me get some spray to lube that thing up. And again. So I have this piece of, I think it's axle, is what it is, and it's about uh, one and a quarter maybe. And there's the bushing that was in there, and the bushing is larger, the hair larger than that. I'm like, excellent, that'll work out just fine. Just punch out the bushings and we'll go with a larger pin. I'd rather have the pin on the beefier side anyway. See the slot that's in it. That's the problem. That goes in that far, and the camera's not going to pick it up, but there's a ridge right there and probably what that was for is so that the bushing only went in so far and stopped but i don't think that is a separate piece i don't know um it kind of you whack it with a hammer it starts to go in there I'll show you Help if I put the camera on it, huh? Kind of tight. So I don't know if I will be able to get that. I might chuck this thing up in the lathe and we'll just kind of grab some emery and we'll just kind of polish it up somewhat and it may go. Or I may try going with some kind of reamer 
inside of here. I would think that that would just be like a spacer that would float in there, but again, as you can see, it really doesn't seem like it's moving all that much. So I'm gonna take a minute, I'll drive this back out, and maybe we'll see if we can punch the bushing out of the other side and see if that center section will slide out. If not, we'll have to get along on the fancy side. Well, I drove the one out of the other side, and I figure what we'll try and do maybe is we'll hit it with a brake cone and see if that's just a a small lip that's stopping it or if it goes all the way across again I, I wasn't able to drive that out of there but let's see if kind of cleaning it up we'll do anything let's go with get it as tight as we can gonna take a while. That's gonna take forever. a little better we'll do that and we'll flip it over and get the other side actually I probably don't even need to flip it over because this end will be in that uh, outer sleeve which has plenty of room if someone's gonna ask me why didn't I just take it down on the lathe I don't not do not have the tooling to grab the center of it on this lathe and uh, that's why so I, have, I don't I can't pin the back side of this with what I have in the other lay that I have, I just don't have enough room between centers to get that in there. So someday when I hit the lottery and I get a big garage that uh, I can get a bigger lathe. But for now, you work with what you got. Let's see if that brought us any closer to victory. Uh, fortunately not. Well, that sucks. Whack it with a hammer a little bit. It's like so close. Hmm. I don't go crazy. Nah, that's not a sleeve that's in there. I think they just kind of bored it to make it fit. Alright. I'll get it. Hey. 
It's getting personal now. <laughs> I made a mistake of trying to drive it in. I went, I brought it back over on the uh, sander and uh, tried knocking it down some more. And it went in probably about that far and it binded. I'm like, let me just try to draw it right through there. I have a feeling that this might be a little bit of a bend to it. So then I tried driving it back out again and it won't move. So I think my next plan of attack is I'm gonna come with a cutting wheel. I'm gonna cut it right here and see if we can get this thing to open up a little bit. And if we can, open it up and I'll weld it. Let's see if that works. Yeah, let's see if that works. At least get it out. Get some wedges, drive them in there. Still tight. Ah, the struggle is real. So I cut that one free to give some place for something to move. So that got cut free from there. Then I took the original axle that I had and drove that in there. You can see how much it opened up the gap. And uh, it's tight, but uh, this is larger than what I turned down. So I'm gonna go and do some beatings around it here and there. Get a little bit more freed up. And if I can come back with the welder, we'll put a tack there Maybe attack there and attack there. We'll drive this guy out of there. And there should be enough room, hopefully. Take that. All right, finally, we got it. Um, I'm not going to weld that up yet. What we'll do is we'll probably I'll grind that flat. Or I'll take a nail, long nail, and I'll cut the head off. And we'll lay it in the gap. Weld to it, weld to it. Because the last thing I want to do is have um, weld penetrate the inside of that. And cause a problem all over again. So I think we should continue building the rest of it, make it all mocked up, make sure we got exactly what we want, and uh, then we can come back and buzz everything. That was easy. Let's just say punching those bushings out was a lot easier. All right, so now we got some, we got some slop in them. And now we got to rebuild. Jumping across. I'll probably go, I got some more, I think, of this plate, maybe a little bit larger. I'll do the same. I'll scab right across it and uh, make this bridge first, just kind of square them up, we'll clamp them together. Get some tacks on them, actually probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take them back off, we'll clean all this crap off of it first with the flapper disc, get them a little bit more squared up, get some paint off of it, and then we'll lay a piece going across here, tack them, and then swing it up and see how it's going to line up. We want to line up again so that the hole that's going to be here holding the arm when it swings up can line up into one of these so that it can have its stored position and then the rest of it probably should fall back in, into place where it was. So I got that plate cut out and mocked up, sandblasted around these guys, gave us just clean material to work with, and quickly clamped it. We need to get it so that we can grab somewhere on there that one of those three holes. 
and then no one then and then that should keep it tucked and up up out of the way where when the boom curls all the way this stays out of harm's way not that you can't just pull the pin and get rid of it all together but i want to be able to function that all the way so that that does not hit into into that when it's curled so i think we're going to throw a tack on each side of that just to kind of keep it squared for now yeah it looks square yeah we'll throw a couple of tacks on that keep it locked in and then we'll start boxing in the rest of it and we'll make this much this because this was able to collapse is why that failed so if we can make this where it takes all the strength not having one try to rock from the other that these are really tied together well here not relying on the pin so much i think we'll have much better results like again it's just trying to get the the arm location in the right spot so let me go work on that a little bit and uh we'll figure everything all the geometry figured out then we can buzz it all together get that held up into place and again got it tacked let's curl that assembly up and make sure that we don't have a any clearance issues i want to give her a little bit of gas curl in fairly tight I kind of want some space there you drop this let's give ourselves a little bit of slack that's a lot of slack will that be okay So I think we got to come up with how we are going to mount. I could probably grab this one. But you got to be able to get your hand in there to get the pin in there anyway. Hmm. Got to think about that. I wouldn't mind putting another one of these plates parallel for the one we're going to be hitting here. That's probably why I only did that that one and a quarter the first time try to keep room down i gotta go look at that other piece that we took off uh, yeah so i have to visualize where that was on the frame and then where this was i actually think this was standing up that's what it was this was actually standing straight up against those two so it was the bar came across and it stood right up. Did it catch this one? Yeah, because it was flush. It was flush with that. So it'll, it would have caught that one right there. Yeah, that, that pin stood up right there. And then it leave room for a square channel. I wonder if I come up, instead of trying to square it off, I wonder if I come up on an angle right across in a triangle. Make a triangle and then come back. And then we put the mounting point on there. Uh, now we got to go the other way and make sure that we have enough room. So when it's in an extended position that the bar will fit. Let's see if all of us can fit in here at the same time. So the bar is on there. That's how it hangs from the top. I, I'm going with the middle position for now. And by looking at that guy and kind of guesstimating where this was bent, hopefully you guys can see. So that guy was roughly right about there in the center point. So we're going to need to be right about something like that. 
So we need to come up with. I wonder if I should just try torching that guy out of there. And we could probably use that over again. Let me see if I have any thicker material, but we're going to try to make something roughly like that shape so that we can re build from there. We'll find out the location we need to be in the up position, that's the most important one, and then fabricate around it to support it afterwards. Yep, we got a plan. You guys agree? Yeah, one of you is not. All right, function check. I got it just tacked into its location. Pull the pin. We can swing it down. Damn it. You worked in re rehearsal. <laughs> Listen, you. Is that one? Where's the other pin? What did you do with the other pin? Anyway, the other pin will go in there, there, or there. That should be just fine. There should give the best as far as uh, capacity of grabbing the larger stuff. So I think now, whoops, tweaked it. <laughs> Let's make sure we're still good. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right. So now we can go. I do have it lifted off the plate. You can see the gap that's in there, but I prefer that than having to shift this thing up or down a little bit. And I think we can plate it here and plate it right across the back again with more of this. I think that will really make it stout. And this I'm not too concerned about. We'll run a well down there and fill that up, but that's the position it needs to be. Other thing I could do is remove this plate, move it down, but I'm getting tired. As I buzz that, nothing's going to move now. It's there, there, and there. So now I want to come back and put a brace going across here, put a T, and then we're going to do the same on the other side. So this one, I can't come up that far because of where the bar is, but this guy should be fine. So I'm going to whittle that guy down to the right width. We'll tap that into place and stiffen that all up. That'll also help these guys this way too. And something like that. Both plates are in, the pin is in. It's got a little bit of play, but what I like the fact that if something does crush up against this or if, or if it rolls to where it crushes against the boom, this plate will hit this bracket. It won't all be on the pin. I'm trying to force the pin, that'll hit. Because uh, you, know, you can see the size holes difference between the two of them, there's some room in there. Let's see if we can do this without, things are still hot. Although they're tacked. There we go. Pull that out of there. And that's what we're going to have. Now I just got to do a bunch of welding. Box all that in. I think that will be much stronger all the way around. And uh, make for a much better project. My arm still fits. From there to wherever one we decide to go pick there. I'm a happy camper. So now I need about 15 20 minutes of welding and she'd be strong like bull.
the wire. They ran out of bullets in the gun. Thread a new one in. And we will be on our merry way. Let's get that guy to go. That's a little better. A tad warm, but that should definitely hold us together a lot better than the piece of crap that was in there before. So now we got to close up this guy. Uh, again, I'm going to go try to get, see if I have some metal rod I can lay over the top of this or even just a piece of pipe. I may grind those welds flush. Maybe I can get a piece of metal. I got a piece of black iron pipe. I think we'll just section that little piece out of there and we'll make that the cap to go over the top. Got to clean that up before we dig it out of there. Easier to hold. Missed the spot. That's better. See how well our patch fits, huh? I got my hand out of the glove. It's a little warm. I think I have to cut off a little bit of length. Other than that, we're good. And we can knock off a quarter inch. And that should make that hole again. We go get tacky, 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 buzz it, buzz it, and see if the pencil comes out. All welded up. What do you think the chances are that that pin? Still moves. Ha! Awesome. Good. Take that apart. We're gonna go pack that sucker with grease. That's already welded. Uh, what else do I have to do? I'm gonna throw some black paint on on it after it cools down. We hit it with a flapper disc, knock some of the, the turds off of it. And I think we try crushing something. Oh, I got a drill. I want to weld a big washer on one end, and I got to put a, a clevis pin on the other side. So I got to drill a hole yet. Yeah, a little bit more drilling, a little bit more paint. Hit it with the grease gun. All the points on the tractor. Got all them lubed up. And also where the pin is. Pin's a little on the long side, but I'm going to leave it like that. Possibly it can, it can cause an issue with, you know, getting hit, hitting rocks and stuff. But I'd rather have myself a fudge factor if something happens. I can kind of clean up the end of it. Whereas if I'm real close to the end. Biggest pain he asked was... What I used, I think was from a Kubota. This was three-point hitch stuff from a Kubota burned up tractor. All this pivot point stuff. So it's metric and of course now I'm trying to use a standard size pin because they don't have a metric axle or shaft or whatever you want to call it. So that's what made 
everything a mess. I say we fire it up and run it into itself and see what it does. Not that that would be the normal, but uh, I guess you could put all the pressure against it and see if anything decides to uh, want to fatigue. Yeah, let's fire her up. Probably gonna need some choke. Might be time to change that fuel filter too. What do you think? We got our money's worth out of that one. New filter. One other thing I added to it, which was awesome, was this guy right here. Put trailer hitches in it and with a drop down one. It's great for just picking trailers up, moving them around, and then for whatever adaption you want, along with the three hooks for picking stuff and dropping it. Might be too far away. Doing a one handed. <laughs> I work one lever at a time. That works pretty good. Go take the chainsaw, go cut that guy up. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Just fine. Well, guys, we're going to call it right here. I think we have a fairly long video as it is, but that project went well. And this tractor is going to get a lot of work done this summer because the woods out back here we're doing a bunch of trails a big storm came through about two years ago took a couple hundred trees down so brian's been cleaning all that up on his property before that happened we planned on doing uh some trails in the woods and now we're going to do some trails in the so-so woods kind of open woods but we have to put a bunch of logs down where the wet spots are and kind of you know stack them make little uh landings or supports for the the really mucky sections we could ride the toys around so that is why the tractor is over at his house he's been doing a bunch of cleaning up with it not that i don't need to do some also but with that guys i'm gonna go shut her down look at bigfoot <laughs> thanks y'all for kind of hanging out and uh watching uh us weld some junk back together so with that i'll catch you on the next one see ya and one of the other attachments for that tractor is there is a york rake and then I adapted also a two inch receiver onto that and you hang that on the front of the bucket and you can adjust by angling the bucket how aggressive you want to get. You just back drag with it. You can almost pick stuff up with it if you want or if you want to level things out you can kind of curl the bucket down and drag it that way. So that's a good tool too for cleaning up.